In this video, I'm going to show you how to create an animated and interactive fantasy map using tools like Dungeon Draft, Foundry Virtual Tabletop, and my own hand-painted and hand-animated assets. The final result will include controls to turn your map from night to day, have interactive points of interest on the map that players can explore by hovering over them, and even allow them to navigate from one map to the next with a simple click of a button. Taking us from an isometric overview of our large map to an over-the-top view of a more precise battle map that can be used to play out an encounter in our village. In this map I've stuck to just adding in a map for my southern gatehouse here as the players will have to fend off an attack but for my next players, for my next project, I plan on building an entire village worth of battle map, including a bunch of bonus features, which I'll get into in one of my next video tutorials. For now, let's check out a final preview of the backend, the Dungeon Master side of this interactive map, for some more features I, we plan on exploring in this two-part tutorial. Just like on the player side of things, we're able to navigate to points of interest. What you'll notice when I click on the gatehouse, however, is that it doesn't just allow me to jump from this map to the gatehouse map, but instead allows me to write in notes. This one simply saying that players can use it to open the gatehouse battle map. What's interesting about this system is that I can use it to have all my notes available to me at the click of a button. If we click on the guild right here, we can see players can come here to rent some hirelings for the day. This note here includes a nice little table with all the costs per day for each type of hireling and a link for their stats. And finally, in the bottom of our screen, we have our macro commands that allow us to switch from the scene from night to day. Now, let's get into creating our interactive and animated fancy map. Starting with creating an isometric map using my latest asset pack in Dungeon Draft. An asset pack I've referred to as Crosshead Regions or CHR with the subtitle Town Maps. These assets are rather small as I do plan on using them to create full region maps in due time. But for a small town map we can just start with a 20x20 20 20 map here. I start off as usual by turning off the grid and snap and then we can go check out the first tool, the terrain brush. I've only a few of these for this first project including a dirt, grass, snow, cobblestone and ice brush. So let's try them out. You might notice that the scale of these brushes is rather big but I feel that it provides just enough finesse on the smallest brush size to, to get what to get done what I need doing. Now, next up, let's check out the object tools. The second out of three tools I'll be using for my isometric maps in Dungeon Draft. What's nice about the object tool here is that I can focus on allowing users to customize the color of certain objects, like the roofs of my houses, this makes these objects a lot more versatile in creating a town or city, easier to make houses of the same design stand out from one another, with a simple twist. I've also added in a lot of small objects that allow users to make areas to stand out, like tarps, lanterns, tables, or even adding in scaffolding to certain buildings. For my animated objects like this windmill here, I've added in both the still version of the object and the object that is used as a base for the animated one, making the assets both useful for people who like to go all out and build an animated map or ones that might just enjoy printing their maps at home. Next, let's take a look at some objects like walls that have been designed to be easy to use for those of us who, like, who do like using the snap option in Dungeon Draft. Starting off here with my palisades. You'll notice that they can be placed freehand quite easily, but
but you'll also have to use the snap function to have them snap into place right next to each other, making it easy to build a fence around our village right here. A wooden palisade is quick and easy to build if you want to have some basic defenses for your village. But maybe you want to take things up a notch and build a wooden wall that can be manned instead. Same thing as before here, we just use the snap to place the basic building blocks of our walls into place and once we figured out the basic outline, we can polish our walls by adding in these connector pieces. Using an isometric perspective, we need to simply take into account that everything in the upper left corner is behind or under objects and everything in the lower bottom corner is in front. So when placing an object, you might have to push them back or forward when placing them out of order. A more experienced designer might start working from the back of the map to the front and get it right straight away. But using the tools, it's really no hassle to get it right afterwards. Just like before, we add in our colorable gate colorable gatehouse. For now, all of them are in the di diagonal position, which is the most interesting visually in isometric perspective. Once that is into place, we can add in a tower. We simply place it wherever we like, uh, move the walls where needed to provide some room, use the back and front option, and Bob's your uncle. Next, let's take a look at adding some green to our map. Placing some trees can be great, but what if I want to create an entire forest of them? Well, for that, my friends, I have two options to get you covered. Option one is the scatter tool. By selecting our series of trees and setting the rotation to zero, isometric objects, you see, isometric objects don't like to be rotated and simply clicking down to plant the trees at random. Turning down the spread will help us create much more densely crowded forest. But as you might notice, it's not great at creating an evenly distributed forest without putting in too much effort. So, for those of us who don't like effort, I'd like to introduce the final tool in my Dungeon Draft toolset here, and that is the Pattern tool normally reserved for creating floors or carpets. I use it to draw out massive forests instead. Now, as you'll notice here, the edges of this forest don't blend well, and using a material that has edges attached to it already doesn't work, because I've, as I've mentioned before, isometric doesn't like to rotate. That's why I've decided to go with creating objects that function as edges to cover each combination of forest a tile might experience. 13 variations that snap into place over the tile we'd like to cover at the edge of our forest. Simply drop them into place, you can hold shift and scroll to the edge of the selection, or just find the right edge in the menu here. I've organized them by combining the straights so horizontal and vertical, and then combining the diagonals that cover corners and a group that, uh, of diagonals that cover the inlets. Each one snapping seamlessly into place to the next one. They make sure that they cover the entire edge of your forest here. Once that is finished, just look for the spots that aren't covered and go back to the pattern tool to edit our main patterns of trees. Finally, I head back to my single tree objects to cover the outside area of my forest to make it look uh, less hexagonal, give it a more distinguished look instead. Now that we've done, uh, now that we've got our village and forest, let's take a look at the tools I've added in for elevation and water. Unlike the forest, which is snapping into place, and the walls, which were designed to overlap quite neatly, with the exception of a few spots that allow more freehand approach, the elevation objects have been designed 
to provide as much room for overlap as possible. The fade at the edges so you don't have to use them. So you can also can use them to create a ramp in an attempt to make them as user friendly as possible. Creating a little straight here which could be a defensive dig around my village or perhaps we can use it to set up a little river running by. Checking back in with our old friend the pattern tool here, we can draw it right under the edges of our objects, even the narrow areas. Making it so that we don't have to struggle with the more clunky brushes in our terrain tool. Once we have uh, our river, let's take a look at some of the edge tools I have for water. Designed to be used both as a separate freestanding object, uh, meaning that uh, it has water spilling out into the sand, and one that can be used underneath our elevated areas to make it look as if the water is crashing against the hillside. Combining objects like this is something I really love figuring out. From creating simple overlaps inside of groups like this bridge here that was designed to be overlapped at each wooden pillar to make it easy to customize its length for any size of crossing, to triple overlaps that allow me to reuse my elevation here with the water underneath, but turn it into a snowscape instead, turning my water into ice for a final touch. Now, before I finish this video, I'd like to take a look a quick look at a map I will be using for the rest of my showcase in part 2 of this tutorial. You'll notice the forest built out of my patterns, edges and freestanding trees. What's pretty neat is that by playing around with these tools a bit, uh, like this here, you can instantly get the ideas for your next project like, ooh, what about building a village completely overrun by forest? It could be a fun place to explore, a story about, that tells you of how these trees have overtaken the village that seem to be completely intact. Well, I think that's about it for this part of my tutorial. In my next tutorial, I will be uploading this map to Foundry Virtual Tabletop and showing you how I turn it into an animated map that players and dungeons master, dungeon masters can interact with during gameplay. I'll provide a link to my website and Patreon where you can buy my assets if you would like to give creating your own map in my art style a try, but I'll also add in a link to the Foundry adventure or world that includes this animated map in all its glory, interactive macros and all for free. So be sure to check out uh, the description for those links and I hope to see you next time.